Okay, so welcome to part two of interpreting the antibody identification panel for the uh, antibody that I added to the patient specimen. Uh, please make sure you watch the other videos, the antibody screen, the antibody identification panel, and um, the interpretation video part one before you watch this so that uh, you'll get the whole process and it'll be so much fun. Okay, so what we did before was we went horizontally and crossed out um, the antigens that are most likely not there, um, you know, by going down and uh, doing the uh, negative lines. So right now I'm going to go and uh, cross off up top which ones we actually were able to cross off so that you'll be able to see what we possibly have. So I'm just going to do that off camera and then I'll be back. Okay, so I went through and I did it vertically um, and I highlighted the two that we could not cross off. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is try to figure out uh, what it is that we have. So, so far, um, we went through and uh, we ruled out um, the negative reactions. So, um, check, we did that. Um, the, the antibody that we have is in, um, it's showing varying strength only in that it's, um, you know, stronger in the immediate spin and then waning throughout the rest of the reaction phases. So the question here asking, you know, the positive reactions, um, do they, um, do they show uh, varying strength or not? It does, but not in the way that it's asking here. Okay, so it all of the reactions in those lines are the same strength in each phase. Okay, so we're assuming we have one antibody there. Okay, so we we can kind of just not not use that one. So crossing um, it off, it would be the single strength. So the next thing we're going to need to do is to rule out and rule in um, negative reactions and positive reactions. Uh, so then we'll match a pattern. Excuse me, we already did that. I was expecting that to be here. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is try to match a pattern and try to do the rule of three. Okay, so the rule of three means that, um, it's written here, that you need to have three positive reactions um, that the antigen is present in, okay? So if you read that here, it says the antibody must be reactive using three panel cells who do possess the RBC antigen. If not, the um, tech must test an extra cell for, from a different donor to achieve those three positives. And the same thing for the three negatives, okay? So... How many positives do we have? We have three uh, positives, so that's fantastic. And we also have three negatives, okay? So we, we do meet that already, okay? So we can uh, check those off. Okay, let's do the pattern now. All right, with the pattern, it says single antibody. The pattern matches one. Um, or the um, a multiple antibody, you match a pattern of positive reactions using the antibody's reaction phases. Okay, we said that we think we have one antibody because they all look the same. And I'm going to stick with that, okay? Um, when you have varying reaction phases, it would mean that, um, you know, maybe you have fours and threes in here, um, threes and ones in here, okay? So you would have different reaction strengths that don't all match one um, exact uh, pattern like these do. So I keep saying pattern, but, um, you know, reaction phase pattern. Now, the pattern that we're looking for is we want to find out of the two highlighted columns, because these are the ones that uh, we could not rule out, um, we want to find which ones actually match the positivity pattern over here. So we're looking for one that is only positive in cell 5, 7, and 9. 
So can you see that one? <laughs> I'm sure you already know which one it is. So let's look um, left to right, okay? So we're at Kel here, um, also known as big K. So we have negatives in all the negative cell lines, which is right. Then we have a positive in cell line five, okay? We have a negative in six, which was negative two. And then we have a positive in seven, which was all positive. Then we have a negative in eight, which was negative, and positive in nine, which was positive. And then everything else is negative like it was over here, okay? So think on that one. So we have positive, positive, positive. All right, now let's look at uh, Lutheran A. Lutheran A, there is no reaction in the positive line. Hmm, no reaction in the positive line here too, but a reaction in the positive line of nine. So this one does not match the pattern of five, seven, and nine. So as you guessed it, this Kel is actually the one that I added. So this is very interesting because Kel is predominantly IgG. However, the anti-K monoclonal antibody that I added from Emucor was IgM, okay? So sometimes they react as IgM, which is what this did, you know, it had the cold um, reactivity that then faded out, okay? Um, whereas if it was IgG, it would not have uh, reacted in the immediate spin. So um, this pattern matches the IgM, and uh, IgM is what was um, put here or what was made here okay and it's made from a human murine um, hetero hydro hybridoma which means that it's a um, it's a cell that keeps on cloning and cloning and cloning the same type of antibody okay so um, Kel is not usually IgM so that's why this one is funky unless it is a new antibody. So this one was newly formed, it's IgM, that's what the manufacturer made it as, so um, this matches. However, if this was a patient that did not have a reagent added and this was really the result, um, you would think that this was a newly forming antibody because sometimes um, they're IgM. And when you look at how um, the the production phases of antibodies, you have IgM first, and then you have IgG, okay? And so on first exposure to an antigen, you would make the IgM. On second, um, you know, and then later the IgGs would be made. Um, but on second exposure, IgM, IgM doesn't happen anymore because you have the memory B cells, the plasma cells, okay? And they would instead produce the IgG. So they're mainly IgG, um, but this one happened to be IgM because that's what the manufacturer did. And again, like I said, if it was an actual patient's antibody, it would be first exposure, okay? And this person would then be um, initially producing this antibody. So I did, for just practice sake, I did not rule out the Lutheran A here because it was heterozygous in the negative, but um, you can honestly do that because it's, um, it's very rare to see it where it is not heterozygous. The same thing with Kel. Um, usually see, see how many positives there are as opposed to negatives of this antigen. Um, most people do not have the Kel antigen, but they do have Cholano. So in order to rule this out, um, in single exclusion would mean that you wouldn't be able to have it in a, um, 
a heterozygous format, which is what I was talking about over here. Same thing. This is very uh, rare to have that antigen. So the fact that they did have the antigen only when they had Lutheran B, I can rule this one out because it was in the negative. Okay, but some places depends on uh, what your clinical facilities um, rules are. Okay, and your procedure, but the the Kel did match it. We just talked about it being IgM. And so that is uh, the end of that. So we, we did all our checklist. So we can fill this out now too, where it was a cold antibody. It occasionally does show dosage, um, but we didn't, we didn't have that ability to check that out here because it was never homozygous okay it was always with chilano so we don't we don't know if that was the case so at this point we don't know okay so the antibody that was identified was anti big k cal this was stain hematology stain um so this would then be um the patient um, distribution of, sorry, this would be where I would record cross-matching results. And uh, we are not going to do that today. We might do that in another video. Um, I don't know, because I'm not sure that I saved the plasma of this patient. So we'll do another video at some point of uh, cross-matching results. Um, and it may not be this patient, but we'll see. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. If you really enjoyed this video, um, please look at the others and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to make new videos as I can, um, but which also relate to the classes that we're doing. Um, so if you're noticing that, you know, we're not doing micro anymore or anything like that, it's because micro is not running. And um, I did a lot of micro videos already. So I hope you're enjoying everything and uh, let me know how you liked this wide angle lens. Um, please leave a comment. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time.